Hi everybody. I'm home alone today just hanging out doing my thing and as I said earlier I'm going to do a painting that I saw on YouTube. Uh, this cute little lady Moulton was her last name. I can't remember her first name. You should go check her out. I'm sure it's Moulton Art something. <laughs> anyway she is so fun. I just love her. She inspired me months ago when I saw this uh, that even I could do this painting. Uh, I'm today in my art room that I created when my children all moved out. I had three extra bedrooms and I didn't know what to do with them. So one of them we turned into a little library. So behind me you see the makings of a what I call a mobile wall unit. When I'm done with this wall unit or I want to move it, I can disassemble the whole thing. It holds a ton of books, movies, and little things that I've collected over the years, pictures and whatnot. Uh, but when I want to move it, I can just move it someplace else. I just disassemble it. So what another brilliant idea is to have mobile things. I move my furniture all over my house. It's all interchangeable. And whenever I want to change, I just move something. So anyway, that's what's behind me. That's where I'm at. Uh, when I created this library into an art room, all I did was I went and got a giant plastic tarp and I laid that down on the whole floor. Then I got a picnic table, not a picnic table, a folding table from the thrift store for like 10 bucks. You know, one of those folding long rectangle tables. And then I put a big giant tarp over the top of that as well. Uh, and I taped it all down and so it would stay nice and tight and secure. Then I got uh, underneath here, you can see, I got a, a couple of Costco, Costco boxes. And that kind of lifted things up to the right height so I don't stoop so much when I'm sitting in here for a long time. Uh, painting away and just playing with my hobbies and crafts. Um, and, you know, when I'm doing one of these, like a liquid pour, for instance, I would tape the back, like they say, on all of the instructions, and you put the push pins in. But I'm not doing that kind of art today. I'm just going to do something fun and easy that even I can do for you, just to inspire you uh, to try something different, try something scary. The reason that this piece of art in particular was kind of scary to me, and, and every time I do, I don't know why, uh, but it's an investment, right? And if it doesn't turn out, then it's a waste to me, you know, but I do believe in just being our best selves. And when we're creating art and we're being artistic and indulging in that side of ourselves, I am more happy and I think we're our best selves and our energy is higher. So I try to do art sometimes just to elevate myself and give myself something that's encouraging. And, and uh, even though it's scary, today I'm going to not only film it, but I'm also going to try this art that I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Uh, the investment was significant to me. I had to go every two weeks at payday uh, and buy these uh, components. Uh, and basically, of course, the canvas that I had to get, uh, I got a pack of them. Uh, then I went with this metallic silver Krylon Professional silver. Then I went another time and I got the Rust-Oleum Satin Midnight Navy and it's spray paint. So this should be really interesting and fun. I have done things with the, the Navy before other projects that I gave away. So uh, I do have my trusty board here that I did something similar in the past with. I just got this off of the back of an old frame and uh, so it worked perfect. I also have the acrylic texture paste. I'm doing my thing just a little bit different than the one that I saw in the video. Um, the other components that I have is, of course, I have these glitter things in uh, a bright navy and a gold and a silver. Uh, and I also got these cute little packets. And they have different kinds of glitter. So guess what? I'm a glitter queen. I love paintings that have metallics and glitter in them. That's really fun for me. Uh, another component in this art piece is glue. I just got the, got the washable clear glue. It works perfect for this project, I think. Uh, I got a little bag of crushed shells. 
Uh, and I got those from like, I don't know, Home Goods or At Home. That's where I got those. And they were really reasonably priced. Then I also got these crushed mirrored glass pieces. You have to be really careful with those, right? Uh, so here we go. Let's see what I come up with here. I uh, have a dentist appointment today to get a couple of cavities worked on. So I'm just going to film this and put it together so that I can get to my dental appointment on time. So I got my husband's big giant oversized dress shirt on. And as you can tell, that's really important. I am a really messy painter, so I don't want to get any paint on me. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got here. Am I buttoned up down here? Oops, I better make sure I'm buttoned up because I, I don't want to ruin my clothes. I'm going to have to take out off out of here after we're done and go get my cavity filled. I didn't do too bad this year. I only had one cavity and I haven't been to the dentist. Of course, because of uh, the pandemic, I haven't been able to get in or go and I haven't wanted to. So <laughs> I did pretty good this year. <laughs> okay, so... The different thing that I'm doing with my little picture is I'm starting off with some of this texturing. I wanted my painting to have lots of great texture to it. Oh, sorry. That kind of sounds like somebody we saw on TV recently, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe that's not PC to say so, but that was pretty funny. I don't care who you are, not fun or out there. Okay, so I'm just going to make this smeared out mostly in a straight kind of line here. I like to have pe uh, my paintings have a lot of texture to them, so uh, this is something fun that I... Look what I did there. I didn't get the lid open right. <laughs> okay, don't make fun of me. Or I'll make you go home. <laughs> okay, come on. There we go. There we go. That looks better, I think. Do I want more texture? I want my painting to have a lot of good balance to it. Uh, like I said, I was an interior designer for years. Years And I found that I felt more peaceful and complete when a project or a room that I was working on was balanced. I felt like the overall feeling in the um, esprit de corps or aesthetics was more comforting if things were balanced. So I am not an asymmetrical person. I don't hang my art. I can't do a flower arrangements to save my life because those are done in kind of an asymmetrical form, aren't they? Uh, so, <laughs> yep, I want my uh, texture on my painting to be very balanced and smooth. Now, the next thing I do is I've just taken one of these old things from a pair of cooker set. And I run more ridges into this without bruising the canvas. I'm going to put some texture down here on the bottoms as well. Just for some surface interest. Now you got to make sure when you're doing your lines and grooves that you keep your lines really straight. Yeah, I'm finally getting back to uh, doing some important self-care. Next thing I got to do is go have my hair done. I haven't had it done in about a year. <laughs> it's getting kind of crazy around here, ain't it? <laughs> it feels odd to see me. <laughs> I thought about just letting it grow out and go gray. I don't know. I don't see myself doing that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just get to the point where uh, I look at it and say... Oh, just give it up, right? I got some blank spots in here that I want to take care of with my texture. So you just look at it and 
decide you know what your what your layers what you want your layers to look like. I'm running out of texture paste here. I just want a dot right here. Okay, let me get my little groove cutter back in here. Okay. There we go. That looks interesting. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me reach over and get something here. All right, there's my silver glitter. Okay, so some would say that you should dry this canvas. I don't really think it's that important to me. Uh, I do have to be careful with it, but I'm not going to worry about whether it's dry or not. So, first thing I want to do is the dark color. Okay, so let's cut that uh, canvas and eyeball it in half or so. A little bit up there. All right, and let's get the first going. So, once you cut that in, and hold up your guard there. Just put a nice heavy dark coat. Got paint fumes in here so I do have the window open to clear those out so I don't breathe in paint fumes. Get those edges really good. I get this set. Oh, look at that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now we're talking, huh? Does that look even to you? Okay. There's that side. Then we do this other side. Where's my silver? Here it is. Oh, here. This trusty board I've used on a couple of different projects and uh, split a couple of canvases in half. I just love navy blue and silver together. Can I just tell you? I just think it's the most awesome combination. Okay. Yeah, there's my lovely, beautiful silver that I just adore. I have navy in every room in my house. I just love it. I have navy and black in just about every room in my house. Okay, pretty simple. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna lay down a basic layer of those two colors and then we can get started with the rest of it. I wish I had music. Somebody told me the other day that you can't play music in your background unless you have a uh, paid ASCAP or something, you have to get permission to play music off of my Spotify that I pay for. <laughs> so music is such a big part of my life. I don't know what to do in here without my music. It's very strange. <laughs> of course, I'm uh, 58. I grew up in the 60s, so uh, born in 62. Most of the music that I grew up to is the 50s and 60s music, so I know Gosh, probably, I, you know, at my age by this time, I probably know eight, nine hundred songs <laughs> that I could sing along to word for word on the radio. Of course, when I was a kid, we were really poor, right? And there wasn't a lot to do. Uh, so I spent so many hours listening to Casey Kasem and the Top 40 Sing along for hours after hours to the music on the radio. It was my solace. Um, it was my peace, my sanctuary, and I just really loved singing. <laughs> Eventually, I got to the point where I could literally sing along to eight or nine hundred songs because that's all I did <laughs> for years. Because I got a little older and the music changed, a uh, course. I was, what, 16 in 1980, so I was Madonna. <laughs> I think a lot of the women 
I don't know. Does anybody these days appreciate Madonna for what she and Cher contributed to our generation? What do you think? I think a lot of the freedoms and the independence that today's women enjoy is because they stand on the shoulders of people like Cher and Madonna who really broke the mold and uh, busted through that I don't know what you call glass ceiling of what a woman vocalist entertainer could do and how free she was able to be with her emotions, with her physicality, with her um, independence. So it was kind of a little bit of a revelation uh, to me to see a woman up there owning it. Uh, she could be sexy and she could be fun living and frivolous and do what she wanted. I mean, not hurting anybody, of course, but she could really just let it all rip and let her freak flag fly. <laughs> and I just loved that being that age and going through the early eighties through my teens. It was just a really fun experience. I was Madonna. I'll tell you what, it was a fun time. I had like a virgin hair, Madonna hair. Have you ever noticed a lot of women in my generation really like the big hair? <laughs> that was the thing for us back then, right? That's just what we were. We loved big hair and I still do. <laughs> yeah, but I loved that 80s music. I can remember going to one of our local clubs here with my girlfriends and dancing to Madonna and George Michael and, uh, oh gosh, some of my favorite songs. I remember writing letters to my friends when I lived down south, talking about going out, dancing with the other ladies, and uh, my favorite song was uh, Electric Avenue. <laughs> that was my groove. Uh, we also, of course, loved, um, oh, Mickey, you're so fun, you know, like that song. That was really fun. And the dance moves that we did back there, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but I had the Madonna hair, I had the Madonna clothes, and I had the Madonna independence. I never subscribed to the, uh, I feel, archaic notions that women should always be prim and proper. Although I find that charming, I never really was able to maintain that. I always wanted to be more fun, more frivolous, more free. Uh, more carefree <laughs> than that. So, yep, I was Madonna for probably four or five years. <laughs> That's a silly tidbit about me. Uh, anyway, so let's get back to the painting. It's really strange for me to sit here and not have any music while I'm painting. Usually I have a fun drink that I really love. And I have some really fun 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s music going in the background, and I sing along, and I just have a riot in here. That's the funnest thing, right? Okay, so we've got our, but it's okay. I'll share this moment with you, and then I'll go do my own paintings another time too, right? Now, what I'm going to do is create these long, um, I don't know what you'd call them, lines out of the glue. Okay, let me just be really careful here. Yeah, I want to have like long lines in my painting here. Okay, how do I do this? I don't know how she did it. Okay. I kind of just want to have like these, uh, whoa, that's crazy. I don't like that at all. Let's see if we can just get big drips going on here. I just want to have some thing, some lines in here that I can uh, attach glitter and stone to. Okay. And my paint is really wet, so I have to be careful. Let's use a different finger going this direction. Okay. 
So I'm just creating lines on my canvas of glue that it can stick to so that when I do this, I have a sticky surface that I can create lines with the glitter and the stone work that I did. I got those crushed multicolored stones that I thought would be really pretty. And then I got some mirrored glass. You mostly want to put your uh, glue in the center here. So you got to have a good center area here that you're going to put your glitter and your stones on. And then you need to have these longer lines on here. But I don't want to have loops. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to have circlets up here with loops. I want to have long lines. And I got to create one about that size, like that one there in that general area. Okay, let's see how that does. I can always add more if I want. Whoops, I got the wrong finger there, didn't I? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we'll see how that does. Let me get these. Oh, you got to be careful because I see a spot there because my paint isn't completely dry. All right, now we're going to do these little colored stones. I think they're beautiful. I don't know how to show them to you, but they are like different shades of blue and taupe and ivory. They're like, I think they're a crushed abalone shell, really. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, colored, different colors of abalone pieces that have been crushed. They feel like oceanic stone. So then I'm going to put these on here like this. And they should stick to my glue well enough. If I put enough on here. Okay, that's enough of those. I'm going to move those around a little bit. Can you see how wherever I put the glue, the stones are sticking? Pretty fun. I like that. And now I'm going to do another little layer of glue here. Just in the center part. And I'm going to do my mirrors. Now, when you're working with these mirror pieces, remember that those are cut glass. So you be soft and careful when you're using them. So you don't cut your fingers. Don't spill them on the ground. Oh, that adds a beautiful combination. I really like that with the glass and the abalone shell together. Okay, let's see what we got going on. Oh, I want to get all the way to the end, right? I don't want to have a section there that doesn't have anything. Like I said, I'm a really balanced person. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to crush all that down into the glue just to hold it in place a little bit better. Okay. Now, I'm going 
going to use some of this spray adhesive, okay? And I'm just gonna put it in the middle here. You can't put it all over your whole painting, just put it in the middle because I did another one sort of like this and it made little satin and bubbles and the, the shine of the paint was lost. So you gotta make sure, okay? Just put it in the middle there. And I'm using one of my little packets of gold glitter and I'm just putting that a very light dusting over the surface there. Oh look, I missed a spot here. Wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I got some on one side but not in the other. Here I am talking about balance. And I missed a whole giant spot there. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, these different layers of texture and elements of shine and sparkle. Okay, so now I'm going to use my blue glitter a little bit here. Ooh, that went a little crazy, didn't it? Wow. Got to be careful with that. Woohoo! I'm going to put some silver glitter over the top of that baby. <laughs> See if I can cut that out a little bit there. Oof. I'm gonna move some of these stones over here and, and take some of that glitter surface off of there. I don't like that that much. That wasn't fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm making a mess. The thing about doing these is nobody really cares. Nobody's paying attention. If it doesn't turn out exactly right, you just give it away or you throw it away. It doesn't really matter, right? Every time I do this, I learn a little bit something more. And uh, so lesson number one, be careful when you're pouring out your glitter. Be careful when you're pouring your glue out, not to go too far. Of course, you don't want to have too much of that uh, glue where it's not supposed to be. If you go with your lines all the way out, I think it's gonna take away from my texture that I created. So I'm not gonna go all the way out. All right, now let me put some of this spray adhesive on my glitter to hold it down. Let's see, oh, I think I want just a little bit more gold because I love the look of blue and gold and silver together. And I want it to be a really full and opulent texture, right? Okay. Lots of spray adhesive to keep that glitter in there, butt tight, right? Okay. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Now, as we go, these little sparklets will crawl down this surface and just look more like a drip. What do you think? It's pretty different and unique, right? I kind of like it. I think I don't like that so much right there. Just work with it. Have some fun with it. Make it unique. Make it your own. Try to uh, accomplish a result that looks in the end. If you go slow, then you have more control over it. See, look how these fun little pieces are crawling their way down and the glue is working its way down into a drip that is more natural. I really like that. That's pretty fun. Well, that wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, if you're gonna have it be by itself, then uh, finish the sides. If you're going to try to put a frame around it, then don't finish the sides. Depends on how you want the end product to work out for you. Uh, for me, I'm just going to keep working with it and see how we do to make it something fun that uh, I can either give away or hang on my wall or something. It'll hit, sit here hanging in my art room for a while. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's it for me today. I'm here by myself, so I'm going to have to leave you for a second while I sneak around. I'm off to the dentist. Don't be afraid to try this. Even though it was a, an investment for me, I think it's fun. It's got a lot of texture and structure to it. It's super simple, and if you take your time, you should be able to do this as well. I'll just make them another one, and then I'll give them away, or maybe I'll hang them all together in a line or a row and connect a bunch of them together and make a collage of this kind of thing. I, I don't know what I'll end up doing. I'll think of something. I hope you had a great time with me today. Uh, this was really scary, and it was super scary to do it on film. I've been trying to get myself together to put this uh, piece of art together because I really just love the texture of it, and I picked my favorite colors, uh, and I, I just let go. Throw caution to the wind. Just do it, right? <laughs> Something that my GIST group taught me. I just love them. On my Facebook page, I have a link to this group. It's called GYST. And if you're ready for a little swear word here, the name is Get Your Shit Together. And what they taught me is to just do one tiny little thing at a time and one thing a day until you get all of your goals accomplished. And I love that about that group. They are really encouraging and inspiring. My daughter Dallas, she just inspires me every day. My daughter Shay, She's such an amazing, amazing woman. I just love that she can do stuff that I never thought of myself ever doing. They're both so much stronger than I am. Uh, you know, for girls in this day and age, they're just so much more liberated and have so much more freedom and independence and strength than I ever thought of. So I love that about them. Uh, anyway, my... Uh, <laughs> the next thing that I'm going to do, my son, David, who is an amazing um, permaculture specialist, I gave him some of my kombucha the other day, and he said, oh, mom, this is really delicious. You should make a video about how to do kombucha, so I'm going to do that soon. Also, my friend Christine is coming over. She's going to show us how to do Christmas candy with chocolates. So I'm really excited to see that. I've never done that before. Um, and maybe there's some of you out there who haven't done the kind of food pantry preps that I do to keep myself healthy and strong and, and to boost my immune system. But I'm going to show you how to make kombucha pretty soon here too. So I have a couple of ideas for this week. Please feel free to leave me comments and suggestions. I really don't know if what I'm doing is helping anyone or if you have any suggestions. I would love to see those. Okay, uh, I really would appreciate feedback and participation and to know if I'm actually helping somebody out there to have a little smile for the day. That's the goal, right? Am I inspiring you to go try something you've never done before? We're all stuck inside, and so this is what's getting me up and getting me dressed and getting me going every day. I hope it's working for you, too. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Have a really super day. Bye.